The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. We have a very important issue we need to discuss. It's called golden penis syndrome. Golden penis, I thought I was getting an award or something, but, but I guess not. Well, joining us now via Zoom is sexologist and host of the podcast, Lovers and Friends, Shan Boudram. Welcome back to the show, Shan. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, and I want to, I want this award too. That sounds like a nice award, but in all honesty, it's not the kind of no, award that not. you really want to get. No, it's a serious issue and it's not a good thing. So let's dive right in. What is golden penis syndrome? It basically is what is happening today where a lot of college age, college educated men thinks their poop doesn't stink for lack of a better term, because there's few and far between of them. So we're seeing an increase in women who are enrolling in post-secondary schools, and we're not seeing that same increase when it comes to men. As a result, for every three women on a college campus or enrolled you know, in college, there's only two men. And so those two men become scarce. And as a result of that, they start to get a lot of attention, which leads them to think, wow, it must be me. I'm so incredible. I can treat people as if they're disposable. But in truth, it really just is a numbers game that they're winning. So what effect exactly is this having on women? Tell us, Shan. Essentially, you've got multiple women competing for one man's attention. And as a result, they're being ghosted. They are getting substandard treatment. They are being led along to think this could be a possible relationship, but it only ends up being hookups or one night stands. In essence, they're getting the short end of the dating experience stick. And as a result, they're frustrated with dating. They are fed up with dating apps. They're even more fed up with dating people who are available on their college campus. And it's leading to a lot of unnecessary heartbreak. Shan, tell us, what are some of the red flags that you might be seeing with someone with GPS? So I think it's about being very clear about what someone says and what someone does. And that differentiation is showing up actually pretty quickly. So somebody might say that they're interested and available, but you notice they don't return texts very timely, that they're flaky on plans, that you find like you're having to compete for their attention. So those are the early signs you can pick up on to say, even though this person has indicated to me, maybe on a dating app, that they're looking for a long-term relationship, or I've spoken with them and they said that I'm actually looking to get serious with somebody, their behavior is anything but that. Well, and not a good thing. I mean, when you're serious about dating, you need to put all your attention into it. Be a gentleman, be attentive, do the right thing. Men are getting a little too lax. If you What we need to I do is schedule you for a tour to teach all of these men how to be good romantic partners and the benefits of being great romantic partners. We're talking about this in terms of being a crisis for women, but everybody struggles when you're not having healthy, reciprocal, mutual um, bonding experiences with people where you get to know more about yourself as more intimacy is created amongst the two of you. So everybody is losing, even though the men who are in high demand right now feel like they're the winners, hence feel like they're the ones with the golden penises. Losers. So what <laughs> can you do if you experience <laughs> GPS, if you will? I think the next thing that has to happen is that people need to come together, specifically the women who are being affected by this surplus of women and the shortage of men need to come together and say, we're not going to compete with each other and we're going to create across the board standards, right? Like the gas uh, industry does this when it comes to pricing. We're not going to compete with one another. We're all going to discuss what exactly it is that we are going to be asking for. And we're not going to try to outbid the person to the left or to the right of us. So I think if women create a universal standard and say, you know what, this is the treatment we're expecting. And if we don't get that, we're cutting this person off. We're going to start to see that men realize, hey, these behaviors are not going to be permissible. I'm not going to get what I want. And as a result, I have to make some serious changes. Exactly right. Well, Shan, clearly you're, you're in women's corner there. Advocating. I'm in everybody's corner. We all okay, need to well, have. Yeah, no, yeah. it takes two to tango. You're right.